zero integration is an integral part of uh, the figured experience. There's a couple of really important things to understand here. Firstly, zero is our source of truth for all of the accounts, um, the accounting basis they operate on, be it cash or accruals, contacts, and all the transactional information comes through from zero. So if you need to edit any of the, that information, um, you need to return to zero to do it. Figured will automatically sync with zero at least once a day, um, but it can happen more frequently as well. Um, if you post an invoice from um, Figured to zero, it will trigger a sync instantly, so that invoice will go through uh, straight away. Um, and you can sync manually as well um, to bring in any changes. So if you've added an account or a contact or something like that in zero, run a manual sync and that will come through. Zero is a general ledger as well, so if you've transitioned to figured from a cash book or maybe Excel based budgeting or something like that, it is worthwhile noting that we inherit all of the account information from zero. So that means in your chart of accounts, you're going to see assets, liabilities, equity accounts. Um, and if you're working uh, with your accountant in, in zero, as is um, working in the spirit of a single ledger, uh, you'll see all those accounts in there and they may have balances in them that you might need to um, deal with as well. The zero sync can be found in the bottom left hand corner of the screen. If you click into here you'll see the last time that zero uh, has synced with figured. So in my case two hours ago. You can also link through to the zero file in here as well. I'm going to click the start button now and this is going to trigger a manual sync. Um, you can see we sync a lot of information. So like I mentioned before, chart of accounts, tax rates, the organisation details which includes the financial year, whether you're operating on cash or accrual basis. Um, contacts comes through, tracking categories um, which we utilise in a couple of different ways within Figured. Um, and then all the transactional information we can get our hands on as well. You can run this sync as many times as you like manually, uh, but like I said it's going to sync at least once a day to come through. So when we talk about planning in Figured, and a lot of people use a bunch of words interchangeably. So we have budget, forecast, plan. Ultimately within Figured, we always are referring to planning. Uh, so effectively, they're the same thing. We use these words interchangeably. Uh, the planning year, so the year that you plan on, it's typical to set this to suit the farm's primary production type. So it doesn't have to be aligned to the uh, financial year that's set in zero. You can deviate from that, um, but it is set uh, when the farm is established and can't be changed afterwards. So important to get that right. Um, and if it's something you need addressed, talk to the figured support team about ways we can do that. When we talk about planning and figured, we also will use the word rolling plan. The best way to describe this is that it's a perpetual planning experience. So instead of having an opening and a closing at the end of every year, the plan just continues to roll. Um, opening balances from one year become um, flowed through from the previous one. Um, and if I need to plan out through multiple years, I can because it all just comes through. Uh, it's also a three-way planning experience, meaning that we primarily budget from a cash flow perspective, but that's linked to a profit and loss and a balance sheet as well. Um, we have a 12-month interface, but you can do any period outside of that. So if you want to um, run on a different 12 months, i.e. budget on a calendar year, and you want to uh, look at what the financial year looks like, you can produce reports to do that. Um, the actuals are always coming through from zero, so when we talk about actuals, they're always zero data. And the forecast information is stored in figured only, so we don't push that forecast information back through to the zero budget, um, primarily because um, we keep a lot more detail than possible in zero. The final thing I'll just mention on this is a concept which you become more familiar with over time, which is snapshots. Snapshots store the previous copies of the plan for comparison, basically, the best way to think about it. So we can have as many snapshots as we like for a plan, um, and that shows us what the history of that plan looks like. 
when we're talking about planning, we're basically always operating in the planning grid within Figured. In this example here, you can see I'm in mean, the 2021 year. I've got my green green here where I've got a couple of months worth of actuals. I've got um, some orange for the remainder of the year, which is my forecast information. Um, and like I said, because it's a perpetual planning experience, if I want to start planning out for next year or the year beyond, I can click the date selector here and drop down to another year or click an arrow and I'll just drop into the next year. Uh, and my opening balances, my closing balances from 2021 in this example have come across to 2022. I don't need to key anything in, reset anything or anything like that. It's just going to continue to flow. Right, the date selector in Figured is a very central part of a navigation uh, experience in here. So you would have seen previously when I was discussing planning, I flipped between years. The date selector will allow you to effectively operate in two in two modes, but with the addition of a third based upon your date select settings. So, in this example here, you can see I've got my so my farm here is operating on a calendar year. So, denoted by my dates on the far left and the far right, um, I'm working. My view is on a calendar year, and I'm looking at the 2021 year. But in the middle, I have my date selected to be actuals. So you can see that I'm viewing actuals from January 2021 through to December 2021. I'll see the full year actual, so if there's future dated actuals, we're going to see them as well. Um, and we're just looking at data that has come through from zero. The second option is you just want to look at forecast information, that is planned information. You can change a date selector to say actuals plus forecast with actuals to none. Now, it doesn't actually mean there's no actuals in there. There will always be some actuals in figured because we need opening balances and zero sets the opening balances for these things. So in this example, by setting actuals to none, it actually sets my actuals to be as at December 2020, the last day before this period here of 1st of Jan 2021. And then I'm looking at the full year forecast from January 21 to December 21. The last option is the most common and often the best way to utilize Figured, which is setting part actuals and forecast. And we've got a couple of options in there to make this a little bit easier. But in this example, I've got it set 2021 year again, actuals plus forecast with actuals to last month. Now this is the most common view that people will use. In this example, I've got um, my uh, actuals to February 21, so being last month, and then I've picked up the forecast for March 21 through to December 21. This date selector up the top will allow me to se select this month, last month or none, or I can pick a specific date if I like. So if I know the last time I reconciled with zero was November last year, for example, I can click that, it will set actuals to that date and it will use forecast information from then onwards. So fairly customizable, but very important um, as to um, the impact on the view. Uh, and these settings uh, all the way through figured as well, so not only does it impact the planning grid, but it also impacts livestock, cropping, milk, uh, and all those other aspects as well. Uh, bank accounts and figured are quite different, obviously, because we get this information from zero and with zero having bank feeds as one of their primary features uh, we obviously inherit uh, a lot of the complexity from there so the way we deal with it is that all bank feeds in zero will aggregate to a single cash position by default so if you have and it's not uncommon for people to have multiple bank accounts in their personal credit cards personal accounts um, term debt, variety of different things in there. So by default, we will aggregate these into a single cash position. Now, 
for majority of businesses, this is not ideal. So what we can do is users have the ability to change the account type in Figured only to undo that, right? And what that allows is transfers between the accounts. So it does make sense to aggregate some accounts like credit cards, um, if you've got multiple working accounts, it makes sense to aggregate these things. That way we don't have to forecast for transactions between those accounts. They are considered basically one cash pool. But um, long, you know, uh, term debt, um, farm management deposits, those kind of things, um, the way we want to have uh, be able to forecast for movements between those accounts and our primary bank account, um, we obviously want to unlock it. So to do that under our default bank um, setting, which is in the chart of accounts section in Figured, um, in this example I've got five accounts in zero, which are all bank feeds. What I can do in here is I can nominate certain accounts and basically say we don't want to consider them a bank account in Figured, hence we don't want to aggregate their position. So my Rabo Farm loan account as an example, I can click the account details um, link. It'll show you what the account type is in zero. In here though, I can click this tick box. I can then change the type. So if it was a long-term loan, I'm gonna change it to be a non-current liability. When I press update settings, we're going to treat that account differently uh, within Figured. Um, certainly worthwhile asking the question if you're unsure about this kind of stuff. You are changing um, some pretty big settings here. So if in doubt, please reach out to ask us for help. Um, but certainly worthwhile change so that you can budget for movements between those accounts and get your cash position correct. On the previous screen, you would have noted as well, we have a field called default bank. Default bank performs two functions. Firstly, it's the name of the aggregated bank account in some reports. So if you've got three credit cards and a couple of personal accounts linked to your primary working account, set the default bank account as the working account and the bank account will be named that, which makes sense. The second function is if you are on a cash book subscription of zero, um, where you just post spend and receive money transactions through to zero, um, that's the account that we will post through when you're entering livestock invoices, cropping invoices, um, which we have the ability to do. Um, if you're on a business edition version of zero, so a starter plan or above, uh, then you can um, disregard that last point as we post an accounts payable or accounts receivable transaction in that scenario. So regarding access and permissions, first thing to note, there's unlimited users in Figured. So we don't bill by user, so you can invite as many people on there as you like. And it's certainly in the spirit of Figured to have as many eyes on this um, as required. Uh, we build out collaborative um, financial positions, budgets, all those kind of things, uh, based upon the impact input of a large number of people on the farm. So what we often refer to within Figured as the farming team. So if you want to invite um, family members, external advisors, bookkeepers, accountants, bankers, farm consultants, those kind of things, please do give them access to the information, get their input. There's four permission levels in Figured, basically being view, edit, advisor and admin. View obviously is read only. Edit has the ability to enter transactional information, enter planning information, but not change any settings, which is quite important. Advisor has the ability to run some valuations, change some settings, usually perform the tasks that um, an accountant or an advisor will do as part of end of financial year processing and the setup. An admin has full access to the farm, including billing, um, uh, some settings changes, those kind of things. When you log in, you'll see two, uh, potentially two different ways that you can access the farm. Broadly, 
Um, you either have personal access, which means you've been individually invited to a farm, or you might have organisation access, which you receive via an organisation that you've been, you're, you're part of and you've been granted access via that organisation. Um, there's no difference in terms of the functionality you have, it's just uh, a note of whether you're an individual user or your organisation has access. Um, and the last point there, accessing Figured is best via my.figured.com. Only worthwhile noting this because I've seen some people go to Google, then go to type in Figured, go to our website, then link this. It's an enormously convoluted process. So by all means, bookmark my.figured.com um, and you can um, save your password. Um, also required to have two-factor authentication uh, for Australian users as well. Um, and it's certainly encouraged um, for uh, everyone just for that extra layer of security. So set up your two-factor authentication via the Google Authenticator app or a third-party app like uh, Authy, um, and then um, you'll have that additional security as well. All right, help and support. Um, just want to show you the support tools are accessible to you within Figured. So primary one, it's really important, is the green bubble down the bottom corner. There are real people at the end of this, um, online most hours of the day between our four markets. So you'll likely get someone, if it's a basic question, they'll address it, um, or a bug, they'll log it, or um, if it requires a bit of local knowledge, then they'll um, you know, tag someone relevant and pass it through. So if you need to get in touch, you can send us a message. Um, and in here, type the message. Um, you can also drop attachments and you can paste screenshots and those kind of things in there, which are really helpful. One of the nice things about the green bubble, as we refer to it, is it will tell us who you are, um, where you're from, what area you're in, those kind of things. Um, that you filled out on registration, but also the screen that you're on, the farm that you're on, and those kind of things. So rather than jotting out an email or anything like that, uh, you can drop it in here and we can um, access um, your information and help you out a lot faster than otherwise. You can also email support at figured.com and it will come through to the same place, um, just without all the nice um, information about you and your farm, but we can certainly find that. Also down the bottom corner, I'll just move myself out of the way, under the question mark icon we have a link through to the help centre. In the help centre we've got some collections of articles which we keep up to date so as a new feature is released we'll um, outline some articles, how to guides, cheat sheets, those kind of things are all added in here and you can search up the top so if you're looking for something specific um, come in here and um, find it or we'll direct you to articles in here quite frequently. Additionally, down the bottom you may have seen that we have a link to the status page in here so if you're um, curious if things figures being a little bit slow or you're wanting, wondering uh, if there's any downtime scheduled or anything like that you can check in there and it will show you um, whether anything's booked. Very rare for us to have downtime though. And the last one is the give feedback section which will take you through to a section where you can um, see requests for features, vote on requests um, and add comments as well. So if there's something that you'd like, type it in here. It might have already been suggested um, in which case um, we'll direct you to uh, that article and then you can add your vote by going through here and clicking what you'd like to see. Um, or uh, what's also really helpful if you see something um, similar to what you're after, um, add the notes on there just so we can um, fully understand the importance of, that, of that, importance of that feature to your business.